Good morning, church. It is good to welcome you all here this morning on this day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are here on the season of creation to begin to uh, lift to God an understanding of God's gracious and, and wonderful love in the world. And we also have a special uh, singing today, so we look forward to that in between the uh, reading, so we look forward to that as well. And we also look forward to then perhaps playing the organ on, uh, on the sending out hymn. So this will be the first Sunday that he plays the organ for us, uh, so we're looking forward to that as well. But at the moment, I invite those who are at home watching on the live stream and those who are here to set aside those things that might be distracting you, but bring to God those things you need to bring to God as we listen to the voluntary. At the conclusion of the voluntary, our liturgy begins on the inside of the service movement. <laughs> Blessed be the one who creates all things. The Holy, the Holy One's, One's love is new every morning. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Human sin disfigures the whole creation, which groans with eager longing for God's redemption. We confess our sin in penitence and faith. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make your face shine upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May your ways be known on the earth, your saving power among the nations. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and reveal your justice in the sight of the nations. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by the Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Jonah. When God saw what the people of Nineveh did, how they did turn from their evil ways, God relented and did not bring on them the punishment that was threatened. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. Jonah prayed to God and said, Adonai, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? This is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning. For I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and ready to relent from punishing. And now, God, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Adonai said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. Jonah sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head to save him from all his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, is it better for me to die than to live? But God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the bush? Jonah said, Yes, angry enough to die. Then Adonai said, You are concerned about the bush, for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left and also many animals. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. 
now I invite Parish Choir and featuring him because mom and dad to come forward to offer a hymn of renewal. And they're going to be singing from up here, or are you going to have to do it down there? Down there? Up here? Is she able to come the students?
Thank you. Thank you. Let us read responsively, breaking at the asterisks, Psalm 145, found in your service bulletin. I will exalt you, O holy God. Every day will I bless you. Great are you, O God, and greatly to be praised. One generation shall praise your works to another. I will ponder the glorious splendor of your majesty. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. You are righteous, you are gracious and full of compassion.
The manager saw some other men hanging around the town square, unemployed. He told them to go to work in his vineyard, and he would pay them a fair wage. They went. He did the same thing at noon, and again at three o'clock. At five o'clock, he went back and found still others standing around. He said, why, why are you standing around all day doing nothing? They said, because no one hired us. He told them to go and work at his vineyard. When the day's work was over, the owner of the vineyard instructed his foreman, call the walkers in and pay them their wages. Stop with the last hired and go on to the first. Those hired at five o'clock came up and were each given a dollar. When those who were hired first saw that, they assumed, they assumed that they would get more. But they got the same. Each of them one dollar. Taking the dollar, they grunted angrily to the manager. These last workers put in only one easy hour, and you just made them equal to us, who slaved all day under a scorching sun. The state manager replied to the one speaking for the rest, Friend, I haven't been unfair. We agreed on the wage of a dollar, didn't we? Didn't we? So take it and go. I decided to give to the one who came last the same as you. Can't I do what I want with my own money? Are you going to get stingy because I am generous? Jesus then said, here it is again, the great reversal. Many of the first ending up last and the last first. The good news, the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. Christ. Gracious God, I call you, Holy Spirit, help me to speak in us to hear you in the words. Amen. Please be seated. So Jesus has been proclaiming and preaching and talking about the coming of God's reign. God's kingdom, God's dream. And it's a dream that the prophet Isaiah heard God say many, many generations ago that God's ways are not humanity's ways. So you better get used to it. And this morning we, we hear a parable that's unique to the Gospel of Matthew on Jesus is saying just what this dream of God is like. And then we also get an account of the reluctant prophet Jonah. Our sacred story from the Old Testament gives us a glimpse of a, a defeated and miffed Jonah. And he's sulking. He's, he's like a little kid. He's sulking because God decided not to smite the people of Nibia. He wasn't going to do away with them. Because they did turn from their evil ways. They did what Jonah was sent to tell them. Be alert. Be careful. Because God's angry. But we all know that Jonah didn't want to do that. And he tried to avoid God's command as much as possible. And so when he finally got to Nibia, and then he found out, well, gosh, you're not going to do it after all. Well, nothing's going to happen. Nothing happened at all. And so poor Jonah's all stressed out about going to Nivea in the first place, and now nothing's happening, and now he's stressed about that whole nothing happening. So what does he do? He, he grumbles to God. Not fair. Not fair. And then Jesus shares a story whereby those laborers in the vineyard who, who completed a full day's work were paid their agreed amount. The amount that they agreed on before they even took the job. And yet, to the full day workers' dismay, those latecomers, those latecomer workers were paid the same amount. 
Not fair. Not fair, they cried out to the estate manager. We all know life can be challenging. It, it, it can be challenging each and every day. And it seems like there can be a whole lot to grumble about. Absolutely. And if you notice, both God and the estate manager, who in Matthew's understanding is either God or Jesus, depending on who you want to put in that place, they both listen intently. They hear what the people are crying about. And they recognize the, it's okay to grumble. Because God is always ready to hear our complaints. But also, I think one of the things that these two particular passages remind me of is that it's our own human nature that tends to once again get in the way. Our, whole, our own human nature is to try and protect ourselves and our dignity and our fear of being humiliated. And so we, at times, prefer to stick close to the rules, the norms, the things that are in one's own well-intentioned interest that were created by us. Or those norms and directives that were set by us and by those whom we give a measure of authority to as they seemingly have our best interests in mind. And but what we miss, and before I say that, what we miss in these things, in these stories, is, is that this is not talking at the moment about an equitable occurrence. It's not a tit for tat, it's not across the board. And so what we hear, and we may miss, is that Jonah, in Jonah's great wisdom, decides to make an indictment against God for being fair, for being generous. And the laborers did the same thing. They make an indictment against the estate manager for being fair, for being generous. So perhaps what our encounter this morning tells us is that in some form, in some fashion, as Isaiah heard from God, God's ways are not your ways. And maybe we need to discover from God's point of view, point of view what equity and fairness along with grace and gratitude are about. And according to this parable, we're not going to like it. God said to the sulking Jonah, Should I not be concerned about Nivea, that great city? Come on. They're people. 120,000 people. And you want me to smite them just because that's what I sent you to, to, to warn them about and they listen to you? And the estate manager said to the representative day worker, Are you getting stingy because I'm generous? And it's, it's hard to grasp, because part of it is, is generosity. Generous for no reason at all. And I have to admit that the generosity God offers to all is, is hard, at least for me, to understand. I can certainly grasp a very broad understanding of God's sheer generosity. And yet, the breadth of this unexplainable, unfathomable generosity of God and what it represents is beyond my human understanding. It just simply is. And I'm okay with that. I've made peace with that. And I would venture to say that it's been this way for humanity since the first recording of, of God's presence in the world. We humans, myself in particular, of every generation, we, we find it easier to deal with things and teachings that are measurable, quantifiable, maybe even calculable. Something that we can easily respond to, be it in giving or receiving. We don't like those gray areas. And yet, for me, when I hear this parable, I hear Jesus simply asking me, asking us to try. 
to try to learn to recognize our experience of the reality in our lives of God's grace, the reality of God's generosity, the reality of the embrace of God in our lives, the, the overabundance of love that God seeks to simply share as God tries to advance to be in a closer relationship with us. And they can go by very, very easily. And sometimes they simply go by because we're just not looking. There is equity and there is fairness found in the embracing relationship that God offers to us. And in return, and in return, God simply asks us that perhaps we too can extend generosity and equity and fairness and grace to others so that they who may not know God at all, just like last week, those who may not know God, those who have never heard of God in Christ, those who for whatever reason have drifted away from God, well maybe, maybe if we see those who believe in God, those who hold dear the name of being a Christian, then maybe we can be that beacon, we can be that light. And they might just be able to see through us, the least of those, the latecomers, the people that had left and come back. Maybe they can just see that God is at work transforming our lives. They might see, as you and I do, that God's desire for generosity can be easily sensed as unmerited and unexpected. But that's okay. That's okay if you don't sense it. Or you get it and it's, not un it's unexpected. It's not quid pro quo with God. It's simply there. God's generosity is simply there. I included a quote from Rabbi Harold Kushner from his book, The Lord is My Shepherd, Healing Wisdom of the 23rd Psalm, and, and I commend that book to you. It's a, it's a marvelous book. And he writes in a section, he says, the poet Wallace Stevens once wrote, death is the mother of beauty. Death is the mother of beauty. And, and that can be hard to hear at first. And in this season of fall, when things around us are dying, are passing away, Rabbi Kushner goes on to say, what those words say to me is that we cherish the beauty of a sunrise, of a New England autumn, of a relationship of a child's hug, precisely because those things will not be around forever, and neither will we be around to enjoy them. I think that's a little bit of what Jesus is trying to get across to us. Life is short. <laughs> Life is short. And enjoy the generosity that God is pouring over you. Enjoy the graces that you need to sometimes discover because if you learn to understand that life is oftentimes isn't about what we have or even that which we express our worth with, it's simply what we are as human beings, as God's beloved, as Christians. And to understand this is to live with a kind of humility. It's, it's very difficult for us. It's, it's very difficult for a white male that has been brought up in, the, in a certain time and a certain way. But it's a kind of humility that values all relationships and seeks to empower others to be their better selves, to be their fuller selves, to understand this and to be thankful and to live thankfully. I think that is a lot of what God's teaching to Jonah and Jesus' teaching to us is all about this day. Learn to live as I've loved you, 
so that you can be a witness to others of my love for you, my love for the world, and in this season of creation, most importantly, my love for creation and how best to care for and protect the very, very good creation that God has given us. Amen. Having heard the words sung and proclaimed, I invite those as able to please stand in body or spirit as we affirm our faith using the affirmation of faith for creation season found on the inside of your service leaflet. We believe in God the Father, the creator of all things, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, the seed of life, who came to reconcile and renew this world and everything in it, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, the breath of God, who moves with God, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We offer prayers. Caring God, we thank you for your gifts in creation, for our world, for our land, its beauty and its resources, for the rich We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Alan and Kale, excuse me, Alan and Carol, our bishops, and for all the people of God who minister in your church, enliven the church for its mission. That we may be salt of the earth and light to the world. Breathe fresh life into your people. Give us power to reveal Christ's word and action. We pray for the world, especially those affected by war, terrorism, violence, oppression, natural and human-made disasters. Give us grace to reach out to them with your love. Creator of all, lead us and every people into ways of justice and peace. That we may respect one another in freedom and truth. Awaken in us a sense of wonder for the earth and all that is in it. Teach us to care. We pray for our communities, our commonwealth, and our nation, especially those in positions of authority, for the men and women serving in their homeland or abroad, and for those who serve as first responders. God of truth, inspire with your wisdom those whose decisions affect the lives of others. That all may act with integrity and power. Give grace to all whose lives are linked with ours. May we serve Christ in one another and love as Christ loves us. We pray for those in sorrow, sickness, or any kind of need, and for those on our parish cycle of prayer, and those we lift up in our hearts are upon our lips. We pray for Wally Wilkinson, who is recovering in hospital, we pray for our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, who's recuperating in hospital. We pray for all those whose lives have been upended through natural disasters throughout the world, as well as war, violence, terrorism, and oppression. God of hope, comfort and restore all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. May they know the power of your Make us willing agents of your compassion. Strengthen us as you share in making people whole. We remember with thanksgiving those who have died, 
especially those whom we lift up in our hearts or upon our lips. We pray for the repose of Mark Grant Sr. and Jack Haverty. And we remember the life of Wayne R. Grondon, in whose loving memory the seasonal adornments in the sanctuary are offered. Give comfort to those who mourn. Bring them peace in their time of loss. Grant, O oh God, that the prayers we offer may be your channel in your new and abundant life. Not only hoped for, but worked for, through faithful word and deed. Amen. Peace with yourself, peace with creation, peace with one another. The peace of Christ be always with you. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace. Peace, peace, peace. Good morning. Please be seated when you're ready. It is good to welcome you here again this morning. It is, it is nice to, to celebrate, even though it's a kind of cloudy day, this beautiful day that we are blessed with, and we are thankful that the storm that was threatening the East Coast, it was not as quite as destructive as they thought it might be. Um, inside your uh, leaflet is uh, a few announcements. I just want to highlight one is that um, the, the decision by the vestry um, to, uh, and I hope you read it carefully, the, to take down the remaining beech tree on Elm Street. Um, it was a very difficult decision. The information's in there. Um, if you would like to talk about it, please either speak with one of the wardens or myself or one, a vestry member, and they would be happy to, to give you more information if needed on why it needs to be cut down. But primarily, it is for safety's sake. Um, it, it's unfortunate that that's the way it is. Um, there's also announcements in there about the upcoming listening sessions for uh, preparing a, a um, diocesan description for the nomination of a new bishop, and we will be hosting one of those in October. Um, if you have problems logging on and you need help, please either get in touch with me or Dee in the office, and we can try to register for you. Um, there's a lot of other options if you're not able to come to the one here in October. Um, also online options as well. So please take a look at that. The rest of the announcements are in there. Are there any other announcements? I do hope that all of you um, remember, because we haven't kind of reminded you all, that um, the, the readings and the prayers are left at the back of the church. And I hope that as you feel called, you might pick one up um, to read or to offer the prayers for us. Um, we, we did have a schedule, and we might go back to that, um, but that comes after our vestry meeting on the second Sunday of October. So um, next Sunday, which is Blessing of Animals, good one to remember. Um, if you have your animals to bring, or you want to bring in a picture or a stuffed animal or something, Next Sunday is the Sunday that we do it. Um, we celebrate the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi, which is the 4th of October. We celebrate it a little bit early, and it's also the conclusion of our season of creation. So please do invite your friends and family members that have pets to, to share in this wonderful service as well. And I do hope those of you who are visiting, those who are here every Sunday, those who come occasionally, I hope that you'll be able to join us in the Great Hall after the service, uh, located to my left and at the end of the hall for a, a continued conversation, a bite to eat, and something to drink. We're going to hear a wonderful, a wonderful solo by Aurora and offered by Ben's accompaniment. It's a wonderful combination of, of celebration of our Lord of our God, and also the beauty of God's creation. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, an offering and oblation for the whole world. Savior, for there is none like 
God's Lord is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All, All things, things come from you, and of your own we give you. Amen. With this bread that we bring, we, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood. Gifts from God to his table we bring. The Lord God be with you. And Christ also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up your hands to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life and body. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forgive us. Time and again you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day we join the saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing.
through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, she will be our honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. <laughs> This is living bread, given for all creation. All who eat this bread share in Christ's body. Come to the banquet, come to the feast. Eat the bread of life. Share in the sea.
having been fed by the word, by the music, and by the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, let us join together in a close communion prayer. Let us pray. Create in us a new heart and a new vision, O God, that the gifts of your Spirit may work in us and renew the face of the earth. May we be one with you, so that our work is yours and your work is ours. Lead us to transform our lives, to reflect your glory in creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who is alive with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So, be swift to love, and make haste to be kind. In the blessing of God who made us and called us all very good, who loves us and came to us in Jesus, and who travels with us through the Holy Spirit, be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Our sending out hymn is in the blue hymnal in front of you. Now thank we all our God. Hymn number 397 in the blue hymnal. Thank you. 